Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working our way through one of the many practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. My name is Spencer Simko, a 97th percentile MCAT tutor, and I'll be walking you through today's practice problem as if you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's problem comes from Biology 1, Lesson 6, the circulatory system. Be sure and hit pause and try this question out for yourself before watching my explanation. In order to answer this question, we need to understand a little bit more about the different ways that our body is able to control blood pressure and blood volume. So in the first one, probably the most complicated, um, we are in a low oxygen environment. So this would be high altitude um, or holding our breath or underwater. Um, and what happens is our chemoreceptors that are in our carotid glomus, which are right about here. So this is our internal carotid artery and our external carotid artery. That's actually able to tell our blood oxygen content. And so when those can tell that we don't have a lot of oxygen, they're going to tell the brain and the brain is going to send these sympathetic nerves to the heart, telling it to increase cardiac output. So that means increasing heart rate, increasing contractility. So how strong it's beating. And those are going to work together to increase blood pressure. And when we increase blood pressure, we can actually tell that with these baroreceptors that are right next to those chemoreceptors, except for that instead of being in the carotid glomus, they're in the carotid sinus. And this is in the internal carotid artery. And that's going to tell the brain that, look, we've got too much blood pressure here. We need to do something. And so what it's going to do about that is it's going to tell our veins to get bigger. That's called vasodilation. And so when our veins get bigger, that's going to decrease the blood pressure and it's able to regulate that. Um, and this is done through parasympathetic activation is vasodilation. But another case is what if we aren't sweating? And that's going to lead to um, increase of blood volume and an increase of blood volume is equivalent to an increase in blood pressure because we have we're trying to fit more water in the same place and so again these baroreceptors are going to be able to tell that we have an increase in blood pressure and so they're going to work together with baroreceptors that are actually inherent to the kidney to increase urine output and so um, yes we are going to do vasodilation in this case but that's just a quick fix we want to be able to actually fix this problem of having extra blood volume. And so our kidneys are going to get rid of that. Um, but another case might be if we have increased stress, um, for, for example, in this problem, we have someone who is at the Olympics, he's nervous. And so we're going to have these stress hormones, cortisol and epinephrine that lead to sympathetic activation. And so that's going to lead to vasoconstriction actually. And so we can't rely on that as a method to regulate blood pressure. And so in, rather than increasing, rather than using vasoconstriction, we're going to use this urine output system in order to regulate blood pressure again. So coming back to our question stem, let's read through some of these. Um, this second answer choice here says that due to reduced concentration of oxygen at high altitudes, we talked about that's going to lead to vasodilation and not necessarily directly to an increase in, in uh, urine output. Um, and in an inability to lose water through sweat and cold weather. Now, this might be a plausible explanation, except for we still need to sweat even in cold weather when we're doing strenuous exercise because our body will warm up even more than it's supposed to, even in cold weather. But, and in this last answer choice here, it's indicating that increased urine output would increase the blood pressure, which is the opposite of what it actually does. And answer choice one here says that this is the body's attempt to compensate for increased blood pressure, probably from his extra stress, by decreasing blood volume. And so this is the correct answer choice. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure and give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. If you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our tutoring services and request a free 10 minute phone consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. We look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time.